Absolutely. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, everyone, for being on today. I'm so excited to see some faces, too. So thank you all for those who have your webcams on. Uh, we're still working remotely right now. I'm in, in a we're in waves coming back to the university. And so uh, I'm one of the last waves. So I'm still working from home and uh, I just don't get to see as many faces nowadays. So I'm happy to see yours. And thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, my name is Brianna Larimer. I work with Missouri Training Institute as well. I'm actually a business trainer and consultant. Uh, so I get the pleasure of going around the state of Missouri and providing a lot of uh, training, professional development trainings for frontline employees. And so it has been an absolute blast. I have enjoyed my, my time. It's about a year and a half now I've been with MTI. Here's our wonderful team, as you see on your screen. Uh, so Dewey Thompson is our director. And of course, you met Miss Ray uh, here at the beginning. And so we are a small team, but we are mighty. And so if you're not quite familiar with exactly what we do, again, it's that customized training. We build it specifically for you, for your organization. Uh, Ray is an executive coach. She's uh, incredible to work with. So if that's something Something you're interested in doing please by all means reach out with her uh, and we've been doing it for over 30 years so I've, I was the newest acquisition uh, background is in journalism so this kind of meshed my love for pouring back into others and telling stories uh, so it's an honor to be here with you all today I do briefly want to just tell you, we are excited. We're getting ready to transition back into our normal programming, if you will. So a lot of the sessions, probably many of you have been on over the last uh, six weeks, a little bit longer, uh, have all been really related to things that we, we thought, topics that we had developed based off of our current situation with the, the, the COVID crisis. And so now we're excited to kind of transition back into what we normally do. Uh, we are going to start these Flash Friday webinars, so they are still all online. Um, and this will be hosted by, by me. I will be your facilitator for it. $49 for one hour. These are our business-related topics, frontline, um, but certainly something that I think all of us can maybe transition back into as we are moving back into the office. So handling change fatigue will be our first one then time management, and then we'll follow it up with some work-life balance before I head off on some maternity leave. So uh, then topic Tuesdays are gonna be with Ray. Ray specializes in management. And so these are really geared towards our managers and our supervisors. These are 90 minute webinars, and it starts on Tuesday, July 14th, leading through change. Then we have the leading strengths-based teams. That does include the Clifton Strengths Assessment. So um, with the additional fee for the assessment. So if you haven't taken that, but you've always been interested, by all means, please sign up for that class. It's going to be an exciting one. Um, and then, I'm sorry, the last one, coaching for performance. There we go. Uh, and that will be co coming in August. We will have more topics. We are also transitioning back into classrooms with your safety being the number one priority. So we have a lot of things in place if we're going to be working with organizations in class, including the social distancing, including the um, sanitation and, and several other measures. So if you're interested, we would love to hear from you. Reach out to us and we'd love to see what we can do for you or your organization. With that, let's talk about what we're really here for today. Uh, and I wanna get us started with this particular question. If you were going voting, and I'm gonna put this up in a poll in just a second, I'd like to know from you, which would you prefer to have? And so the A, option A there is your, of course, your life vest. Option B is going to be your life buoy. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll. You should be able to respond just on your computer there. I'll wait for some responses to come in. Thank you all for participating. Excellent, give it a few more seconds. We're almost there, almost 100% voted. Thank you guys. All right, closing it down in three, two, one. I'm gonna go ahead and share these results with you. All right, 92% of you said that you would like to have a life jacket if you were going boating. And I will tell you, probably a lot of us in the back of our heads were actually thinking both, right? Brianna, I want to have both of those on my boat with me. <laughs> but the reason why I, I chose this particular example is when we really think about things, when we think about our lives, when we think about this topic that we're here for today, proactivity, 
I would venture to suggest that a life jacket may be a little bit more proactive than a life buoy. And part of that is because your life jacket is something that you zip on, you, you get all situated in before you get on the boat, right? Whereas a life buoy is typically thrown to you once you're drowning. And so we do hope that you're preventing the drowning by putting the life jackets on. And of course, the life buoy <laughs> is just an extra, extra means of support there. So both answers, absolutely correct. But I wanted to use this metaphor to get us started on this idea of being proactive. Because I, I think a lot of times we don't pause and recognize that being proactive is just that. It's, it's kind of preparing for what may be coming, right? It's really acting as opposed to being acted upon, as opposed to being thrown that life buoy, right? Having to be saved in a situation. And so one of my favorite authors, Hold on just a second, my computer froze. There we go. One of my favorite authors here, Dr. Stephen R. Covey. He wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, if you're familiar with the book, then you know that habit number one is just this. It's being proactive, right? And, and he is quoted as saying, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. So just as much as if we are getting ready to go out and get on a boat, right? You make the decision at that point whether or not you're going to vest up or if you're going to take your chances, right? And so we, when we think about this concept of proactivity, we have to realize that there are, um, there's a certain choice that is put on us and that we have to be cognizant of as we move forward with whatever response or decision that we would have. So I wanted to play this quick video for you. It it really explains this first habit, and uh, then we're going to break it out just a little bit further through the rest of the session. So with that, we control how we respond to our situations. And I think that this is a very critical piece I hope we take away today, because a lot of times, let's be honest, it, it becomes very daunting, very weary when so many things are happening around us that feel like they are just out of our control. We've experienced it over the last 12 weeks, right? We, we've gone through it now. Maybe you have other additional things on top of it, uh, unrelated to just our, our national or excuse me, our global pandemic. And, and it just starts weighing on us. And at some point we feel victimized to our circumstances. And I think it's important as we're talking about remaining proactive, that we understand that freedom to choose it never leaves us. We have that opportunity to always choose how we're going to respond to the stimuli that is around us. And so this example here you see on your screen does come from Seven Habits as well. Um, and part of what, what we're showing here, what we're demonstrating is we're, we're gonna have the stuff around us. It's gonna constantly happen. There's going to be behaviors from other people that we don't like. There's gonna be circumstances uh, that are out of our control. There's going to be several things that are going to make us have a response. The cool part is that we get to choose that response and we get to choose it here through those four unique human gifts that we all have. All right, and as we, we think about it, our ability to kind of be self-aware, how is this affecting me? Everyone comes from a different set of experiences and backgrounds and have different circumstances going on right now. And only you may be aware of that, all right? So you use that information to determine how you're going to respond. You use your imagination to determine what are some other options? How creative can I be in this situation? All right, that's part of our imagination. No one else can think up all the same things we think up. We have a conscience, right? That little person sitting on our shoulder here saying, well, maybe not the best way to go about that, or maybe it's the right way. And then ultimately you have your own independent will. You have the ability to determine what you're going to say, do, all of it. And I think a lot of times, again, when we think about especially all the stuff that's going on around us, we forget that we have this freedom to choose. So never lose sight of that. All right, don't lose sight of that. So here, throughout the rest of the presentation, I'm going to break out 
this idea of being proactive and some steps to really take to help us stay on track. If we've uh, maybe lost it a little bit, if we're just looking to get reignited. Um, and so you'll see me break these out here in the next few slides. But I would suggest the very first thing we need to look at is understanding who we are. After we understand who we are, then we have an opportunity to recognize the things that we can take control of in who we are. And it's going to take confidence. We're going to have to be confident in, again, knowing who we are, controlling the things we can control, letting go of the rest. And so we're going to have to continuously build our confidence in it. Because here's the thing, part of being proactive sometimes is it may not always go right. So even if you have that freedom to choose and uh, you choose to respond a certain way, that may not work out in your favor still. And that can really weigh on our confidence. So it's important that we focus on building that back up again. And of course, with any good uh, goal setting strategy, we need to be able to track and to strategize now what worked, what didn't work, and how am I going to move forward from here. So we're going to break these out here. And as I mentioned, the very first one, understanding who you are. I'd be curious to ask here, if you've taken any um, assessments, so personality assessments. Uh, let us know in the chat, I guess, what assessments you've taken. Let us know what, what you've enjoyed and what you've taken. Of course, there are several of them out there. Uh, but it doesn't just have to come from a personality assessment. Let me tell you that the very best way to really understand who you are, all right, is trial and error. You go for something, you think, maybe I'll be good at this, right? Maybe it's going to work out. And then you recognize, no, not exactly. All right, I, I had an experience at an organization. Um, my background is in communications, and I loved my job. Uh, unfortunately, due to some changes, uh, my position wasn't what it used to be, and so the organization kept me in a new role, and it was mostly working kind of some HR, some payroll stuff. Uh, I'm a very detail-oriented person. So I thought, oh, no big deal. I should be able to... To do this very well and I could do it but boy did it drag me down <laughs> all right because I love high energy things I like communicating with people and when I was stuck in an office just doing timesheets most of the time or doing filing personnel records that kind of thing it just didn't mesh with who I was so of course I was going to try it right I'm always up for trying something new but I quickly recognized that it was probably an error in judgment and that I needed to get back into something that was a little bit more uh, upbeat and, and communicated with people, poured back into people. Uh, that, that was who I really felt I was. And that wouldn't have come without that trial and error. So I'm so grateful for that opportunity because it helped teach me what I really do enjoy. And a lot of times I'll, I'll own it. I'm on the millennial path, right? I am a millennial right on the edge. Uh, it's hard for us to figure out exactly what we love to do. So again, the trial and error, give yourself approval to do it. Maybe you need to ask. All right, maybe uh, if you don't have a mentor or, um, you know, if, if you don't have someone that's really close to you, maybe looking to find someone who you would trust their opinion of, your abilities, your knowledge, your skills, because maybe they see things in you that you don't see in you. All right, and that was something I was so incredibly grateful for with Ray and Dewey as I came on. I didn't have experience in actual training, in doing a, being a business trainer. And I thought, goodness gracious, there's absolutely no way that this is going to fit. And then I just asked, right? We had to go in and do our demo for the interview. And the feedback that they gave me was so incredibly kind. And it really helped me then start building my confidence and my ability to be able to do this. And all it took was taking that step and asking, hey, what do you think? Was it all right? What can I improve on? All right, what do you see me being good at? Of course, we mentioned the personality assessments and I'm seeing chats come in, so I'm assuming you all might be talking about those. Um, we do personality assessments at MTI, so meaning we, we help um, facilitate those. We do the Clifton Strengths, as we mentioned earlier. We do uh, True Colors. We also do the EQI 2.0, so the Emotional Intelligent Inventory. There's so many out there. A lot of you might be familiar with DISC, right? This, these are starting points. 
So those assessment results don't define who you are because we're always changing, but it's a starting point to really understand, okay, I can see how that plays out in my life. Because again, sometimes until it's brought to our attention, we don't recognize that that's part of who we are. And then of course, the last one's gonna be just your own self-evaluation. All right, really taking the time to reflect and to evaluate, is this, am I being true to character, who I think I am? Or are there different paths for me? Are there different things I should be saying or should be doing at this point? And that in itself will take a lot of commitment from you to stand back and to just spend some time in reflection. All right, so those are just kind of some ideas to start getting you going on understanding exactly who you are. And of course, if you're interested in any of those assessments we mentioned, uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to, to help get you started down that path as well. But the next piece to this, after we understand who we are, then we need to be able to start recognizing the things we get to control. As you saw earlier in that, that short video, there are so many things that we have in our circle of concern, right? Very, 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 very few of those things do we actually get to control. And I would suggest that really there are two things in life, the whole big scheme of it, two things that we get to actually take control of. All right, and the very first one is your attitude. You get to determine what that is going on up here. Okay, you get to determine what your self-talk is going to say, what you're going to allow your self-talk to say. All right, if you're saying a lot of negative things, I'll never be good at this, or, oh, I'm such an idiot, or, oh, then understand those things will weigh on you, all right, and you will believe those things because that's what you are telling yourself. And so I know that it sounds feel good, you know, mushy gushy, I guess, when I say take time to take care of you, but that's incredibly important to just pause and say, what am I saying to myself about this? You know, if you get a project back, I remember my very first training presentation I put together, um, and it had a lot of markups on it when I got it back. And immediately, the first thing I wanted to say is, see, you knew you weren't good at this. All right, but we have to be able to change that. So listen to what your self-talk is saying. All right, think about what you're consuming. Right now, it has been so incredibly easy to consume a lot of our news. And I used to be in journalism and broadcast journalism. And I'll tell you, I think that there is absolutely a critical role that our media plays. However, right now, you might need to turn it off. All right, because just as I got out of that business, sometimes the negativity will weigh on you. All right, think about what books you're reading. Think about what blogs you're reading, what podcasts you're listening to. All right, junk in, junk out. So what you're hearing, what, you're, what you are experiencing is then how you're going to feel and how you're going to share experiences with others as well. All right, who are you associating with? All right, sometimes when we take a big look at our, maybe our close friends or maybe even family members, all right, the negativity that they might bring just affects our psyche to a point it's not healthy and so it's okay to set up boundaries it's okay to say look all right i still love you all right we're just going to have to cut back on some of the time we're hanging out together maybe it's a coworker in your office all right so what are you going how are you going to handle it? How are you going to set up those boundaries to make sure you are taking care of you so it's not affecting your attitude um, and how your character is being, um, being considered, okay? Um, you always have to act with purpose, all right? That's the one thing is a lot of times we get so caught up in this busy work, our attitude, or excuse me, our, our, if you say, I say attitude, we can interchange that with mindset if you'd like, um, but our mind is just going, 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 all right? And a lot of times we're just thinking about checking things off the to-do list. That's great, all right? But is it really the most important things that we should be checking off the to-do list? And so when we aren't acting with purpose, we oftentimes get caught up in that whirlwind. If we don't know what the most important or valuable thing in our life is right now, it's very easy to start mixing a few fruit. For me, my highest value is my family. 
And if I say that, then I better act that out. All right, I better act with purpose on that. And so it's also important that we push past any limits we've set for ourselves, okay? That when we push past those limits, we don't set ourselves up to fail. It's okay, whatever happens in this situation, I'm just excited I took the risk. All right, I, I shared in a, a previous training and I, I'll share it in this one as well. Ray said it's memorable. So um, when I was growing up, I was the only female wrestler on my, my junior high and high school team. And I knew someday I just wanted, I wanted to be a cage fighter. Okay, I wanted to be able to fight in the cage. And of course, as I got older and things, you know, life happens, I certainly thought there would never be an opportunity for me to be able to do this. Um, then one day the opportunity arose. Started training, worked my butt off. And the thing was, when I fought the first time in the cage, I didn't know what to expect. And that was the cool part about it, was I didn't know if I was going to win or if I was going to lose, and frankly, it didn't matter because what mattered was the journey that I took to get there. Okay, so if I would have lost, which I didn't, but if I would have lost, <laughs> that, that setback would have only been used to improve my skills even more, right? It probably was, would have pushed me even more. So be careful. Don't take yourself so seriously and recognize that other people are going to have limitations too. Okay, you might have to rely on other people. Maybe you feel like the other people are the ones holding you back. Forgive them. All right, forgive them and move on. I think one of the biggest things that we're lacking right now in a society, which is step on soapbox, step back off in a second, it's just consideration for others. Okay, so forgive the limitations of others. Say thank you more frequently. This is all starts here. Okay, it all starts here. The second piece to this, so the very first one I said was attitude. Okay, the second thing I think you can control and only you have control over is your effort. All right, and my favorite quote ever by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, be humble, be hungry, and always be the hardest worker in the room. Okay, a lot of times we lose sight of that. We think, oh, well, I'm not getting the appreciation that I deserve for this, or oh, well, I've been here this many years, and so we kind of become complacent, or, you know, great if that's, if you're comfortable with that, but I'm going to challenge you to push past that, right? I'm going to challenge you to be the hardest worker in the room, because at the end of the day, all right, I promise you that the other people will see that as well. It may not be all people, it may not be the people that you would hope would be seeing it because maybe they're too busy in, in dealing with things they have going on in their life. But at the end of the day, I think knowing that we put the effort in is most important than to us. And so at the end of the day, that's the most important piece here. All right. With this, you got to be able to set goals. How are you going to put the effort in if you don't even know what the goal is to begin with? And so when you have those goals, are you then committed to getting those results? So a lot of times people use weight loss. I'll use it. Oh my goodness, how many times have I been on that journey, right? I set my goals. I set unrealistic goals. And so I'm thinking every week I should be losing five to seven pounds. Not exactly, okay? So then I lose my commitment to getting those results. All right, I get complacent. So this next question on here, are you rejecting complacency? When I say, oh, well, you know, I was going to the gym five days a week. Now I'm going two. That's all right. Okay. Complacency becomes laziness. Now, I'm not suggesting that we don't get to a point where we can just be content. All right. And contentment and complacency are two very different things. All right. We can reach a point in our life where we are content. All right. I would always encourage you, though, to push past complacency. Because right, we don't want to just let it down, let our guard down like that, to be comfortable with the laziness, okay? Continue to push past it. And always adopt this growth mindset. And if you haven't heard about what this is, let's just chat for a second, all right? Growth mindset. So research suggests that we, there's really two different kinds of mindsets. Again, you can interchange mindset with attitude, Okay, those, those are the very same things. And so a lot of times you may have people, people that you know, 
that represent this area called a fixed mindset. Okay, and maybe they think, and when I, I see this in my life play out typically with my older family members, actually. Um, so skills are set, right? You kind of have what you have. You can't develop further than that. And so I have a family member who has always been um, in cosmetology. And to her, that's the only skill that she has. All right, she doesn't think that there's the ability to um, to go beyond that or to recognize what all it took to be a cosmetologist when it came down to the customer service, when it came down to your ability to manage multiple things. You know, there's so many pieces, so many variables to it. But because we operate out of that fixed mindset, we just think this is what we got and I got to stay with what I got. All right. When we're putting in effort, okay, for people with fixed mindsets, it's it takes effort when you're not good at it. So I don't really want to put the effort in. I just want to keep doing what I'm good at. So you can see how we kind of stay stagnant with the fixed mindset. A lot of times if people get some constructive criticism who are working out of fixed mindsets, they're going to take that personally. Right? It's never going to go well. <laughs> never going to go well. And so I'm challenging you today. If any of these things are resonating with you and you're asking yourself, hmm, maybe it's time to start moving over to the other side of the spectrum here recognizing that your skills they can be grown they can be developed all right effort is an important part of learning we should never stop learning in life we should never stop trying something new all right we never get too old to do that i I think uh, I have these goals, I guess, in mind when I'm when I'm down the road, you know, and in retirement, things that I want to pick up and I want to do, things that I aren't necessarily on my horizon right now, but things that I certainly want to try down down the line. And so understand it's going to take effort for me to be able to do that. And so I hope as you think about things, what's something that maybe, maybe was a dream, right? Something you thought, hey, I really think it would be cool if I could dot, dot, dot. Go for it. All right. Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't expect that you'll be great at it because you may not be. <laughs> but you can develop and grow those skills. All right. And you people who, who really operate out of this growth mindset, they persevere. Right. They typically can overcome those tough challenges. Research does suggest that when you begin operating out of a growth mindset, that it actually starts changing the way your brain behaves, the way your brain operates to where you are then more inclined to continue to operate. It's almost like you, you gain momentum. So you got to start, you got to kind of plant the seed, right? It takes a while, you got to water, 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 and then eventually it becomes this beautiful uh, meadow of, of flowers, right? And so understand if this isn't something you're used to it will take some work but it's certainly something that will once you start watering the seed okay it will grow it will grow so think about your effort think about what you're putting into things right now and it doesn't just have to be professionally it can be personally as well vice versa all right are you adopting a growth kind of mindset so with that i want to pause real quick i would like to know from you what is one thing related to your attitude or your effort that you've taken control of in the last three months? So one thing related to attitude or effort that you've taken control of in the last three months. And then I'd like to know, how's it helped? Okay, how's it helped? So I'm gonna turn it over to Ray uh, to see what some of those chats are coming in. Excellent. Um, I wanted to back up when people were talking about their uh, personality inventories and we had a lot of Myers-Briggs um, coming through and a few uh, a few Clifton strengths and a few true colors. So thanks for those uh, comments So all right getting into this. Wow. I love it. We've got uh, working full-time and going to school full-time um, Patience and and positivity Managing teams remotely and thinking about how we're approaching that new way of connecting um, the idea of maybe just being positive. So I'm seeing a couple of comments. Thanks, Susan. Um, it helps to keep things moving forward. So a lot of mindset um, related issues to positivity and making healthy choices. 
Uh, wow, great. Donald talks about the rural online initiative. So that's a big push for um, Mizzou as well. And let's see, things are going by quickly. Viewing things differently, um, Karen said. And Debbie, just being present. Um, positivity again. Learning to switch between working at home and working in the office. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, focusing on what I can control and being grateful. So I appreciate that, uh, Tracy. Improving relationships, um, recognizing the way that my job's changed, and just kind of a heads up, attitude down is what Becky's talking about. So wonderful, leading remotely. And I, you know, when I think about leading remotely, you know, some people have thought that that has been a very difficult um, thing. I have to say, I've actually enjoyed it. It's brought more intentionality so uh, to my ability to lead. So I really appreciate all of those. Uh, Meredith says, using her calendar mm -hmm. <laughs> to schedule things and follow through. So lots of good things people have been trying related to attitude and effort. Excellent. Thank you all for all of the great responses. Goodness. It's exciting to see the journeys you're on because here's the thing is, you know, we keep hearing on these commercials and everything else that we're separate together, right? And sometimes we forget that everyone is going through the exact same things that we are when it comes to navigating this new norm, right? We all have our extra stuff. We have the things that no one else may be going through. But when it comes to really how our attitude and our effort has changed during this global pandemic, all right, a lot of us were sitting in the same boat, right? The transition to working remotely to now going back to the office and to figuring out, I'm, it's still navigating going to a grocery store. How close should you be to someone? How, you know, man, it can just weigh on you. So I am so excited and I just want to continue to encourage you all. Um, great work on, on the things that you are taking control of. All right, attitude and effort, always two key critical pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. My screen froze again. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> all right, so we've understood who we are. We're recognizing now the things that we can take control of, things that, that our attitude, our effort, right? Now we also need to recognize, we've understood who we are, we've taken control of these things, maybe I'm taking those extra risks, and now I'm gonna have to keep trying to build on my confidence too, all right? Uh, you will not be successful at everything. It's impossible, all right, and that's okay. And as a perfectionist, let me tell you that this was a hard pill to swallow, all right? And, I, and for all my other perfectionists out there, give yourself some grace. All right, it's important that we are picturing success at the beginning of everything that we begin, but understand that there could be things along the way that, that change our, our picture, okay? And it's okay to give yourself some grace and to say, well, maybe that just wasn't the right thing, okay? Ultimately, that builds your confidence up even more, okay? Because then you're transitioning now into this ability of, of believing that you can improve in it. We're gonna change the way we did that. We're going to uh, maybe look at doing this instead because maybe this takes more priority in our life right now. And it sounds odd, but the reality is, is every time you step out into this ability to improve, practice maybe mentally, prepare mentally, um, what is it gonna be like to fail? I know when I, when I wrestled in school, um, one of the things, and I know it sounds really odd, but I would, I would actually practice because I'm, I'm always up in my head a lot. And so I needed to know what it was going to feel like if I got pinned, right? And so I would actually have my, my, my partner that I, I would wrestle with, I would say, hey, I need you to actually, like, just pin me. And I said, I will try to get out, but hold me down, right? Just, just let me know what it feels like to fail. And so we need that practice because it's going to happen and when it's something that we are not comfortable with or we are not used to then it becomes something um, so much greater in our own psyche in our own mind and it weighs us down it will actually hold us back the next time if we're not comfortable with it all right and maybe maybe something you failed at something right and maybe you just said okay i'm done with that i'm never going to do that again it's kind of like when you touch the hot stove and you're never going to do that again because it was hot and it hurt. All right. Maybe part of that was 
you didn't, you just stepped away from it altogether. We didn't ask for feedback from other people. Hey, what was it I could have been better at in this? All right? Maybe you just pulled away and said, mm, not for me. And maybe in some cases that's okay to pull away and say, not for me. But I'm very inquisitive and I like to get feedback from people. I like to know, hey, how am I doing? Right? I ask Ray and Dewey, how am I doing as a business trainer? What areas can I improve in? I ask my husband, how am I doing as your wife? All right? Are there things that you need more from me? And those are things we don't pause and take the time to ask usually because again we get caught up in those 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 whirlwinds the things that are keeping our minds busy we have to be willing to take risks okay it may it may hurt for my poor husband probably a loaded question when i say uh, how am i doing as your wife right but i was ready to hear it i want to hear it you're not in a position where where you're not ready to hear it all right you're not feeling risky enough to hear what that person is going to say find a different time to do it. But understand that as we start hearing things that, that we are good at or things that we may not be so good at, it will start building our confidence to say, I'm going to get better. Okay, I'm going to get better or I'm glad I'm there. I'm going to keep getting better. And so never stop trying to build your confidence. All right, find out what it is for you that will work to help to help boost that. All right, who it will be that you need to talk to, what risks it are that you need to take. It starts with some of the language that we use. All right, as I mentioned earlier, it's all, it all starts up here first and foremost, but at the same time, it, it also starts in um, the words that we use when we communicate with others. It's how they view our own confidence. So an example of this, how many times have I heard, oh, there's nothing I can do. Okay, it is what it is, nothing I can do. That's really a reactive response, right? That's, hey, I'm drowning, throw me the buoy when you can. There's nothing I can do about it at this point. All right, maybe instead of saying there's nothing I can do, how about let's look at our alternatives? Because I bet there's always something, okay? It may just really take us stepping outside of a comfort zone or challenging the status quo, but there should always be some alternatives. All right, maybe things like that's just the way I am or, or he makes me so mad. Oh my goodness, how many times have I heard that where we put it off on someone else, right? They're responsible for how I feel. All right, they won't allow that. These sound like very defeating statements, right? How about we change it? I can choose a different approach. Just because I was born this way, right? Not to quote Lady Gaga, but it doesn't mean that I can't choose to be different now. All right, and I think that, that we're learning this. Um, this is a hot topic right now in our society, is that we always have the opportunity to be proactive, to choose different approaches. All right, I have to do that. How about I get to control how I respond to this? Yeah, this project may suck, but after I finish it, I'm gonna go have happy hour, okay? So recognize you get an opportunity to control how you respond and how you look at things. So we can act in those self-defeating ways, right? The kind of the victim mentality, or we can say, I choose to be different, okay? Oh, I can't do that. Well, no, I'm gonna choose to do that, even if I don't like it, right? And so, so on and so forth here. You see on my, my list, right? These are just some statements that I hear frequently. And I think that it's important that we really take a moment and we reflect on what is it, what are the words that are coming out of our mouth? Because our words can really be the first uh, sign of what's going on up here. So maybe if you're not really kind of navigating the whole up here, if you're up in your head all the time, start looking at the words that you're using. All right, the statements that you say, and that will really help gauge then, am I really being a little bit more reactive in this situation or am I being proactive? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so the last one I'm going to talk about here is the tracking and strategizing part. All right, so we have understood who we are. We understand that we get to control our attitude, our effort. We're going to keep working on building our confidence, and now we have to know what's working and what's not working. We will have barriers to this whole process. All right, and the very first one and the most detrimental one is that 
it's easier to get caught up in the busy work, right? The things we're checking off of our to-do list than it is to really focus and hone in on the things that you are trying to improve on, the things you're trying to take risks on, the actual outcomes you're trying to be successful in um, as a result of the goals you've set. Let me just stay caught up. I think about Facebook. Oh my goodness. I'll own it. That's part of the one millennial thing with me is I'm like, I'll take just a quick five minute break. Just see what's going on in my timeline. Update my status. Okay. All I'm doing is procrastinating on the things I really need to be doing. And I know that that five minutes turns into 10 minutes. Okay, so understand what is it for you that you're just doing to avoid having to really push yourself and put in the effort to move forward proactively on maybe some harder tasks. All right, what goals are you setting? And it has to be effective goals, right? It has to be things that you are really trying to achieve certain results on. What is your scoreboard? So if you haven't asked, especially right now, if you're still working in a remote setting and you haven't asked your supervisor, like what are our big picture goals for right now? Where would you like my priority to be? Um, okay, and here, here's my plan then. If you tell me that, here's my plan for how I'm gonna get there. Maybe we're not working on the most important things. So we need to know what the goals are to be able to set then our goals to get there. So you have to be able to track your progress. All right, we have to be able to know then, how am I doing? Right, what is the scoreboard for how I'm doing? Maybe it's, um, if, if you're working on something, so for example, I'm gonna talk about my time management session I have coming up, but maybe one of your goals is to manage your time a little bit better. Well, what's your method for tracking that? Maybe you use a time journal, okay? Maybe that's something then that you literally have to sit down and write down every 30 minutes what you're spending your time doing. Come back, look at the end of the day, see where you're losing your time. You have to have a method in place to track your progress. All right, that, at the end of the day, it's pointless if you're not actually figuring out what's working and what's not working. And we need to be comfortable with the uncertainty that I may look at this time journal at the end of the day and be really upset with myself for how I spent my time. Um, I, I could feel like I failed at this, okay? but it's going to push me forward even more. So the next time the next big task happens, I'm going to take it on with kind of some more momentum. We have lost as a society our ability to handle uncertainty, our ability to handle things that we may just not be good at. And that then when we see these big difficult tasks in front of us, it will crush us. It will make us not want to pursue it. You can see now why a lot of us stay caught up in the busy work. Okay, so understand these barriers, recognize again, do some of these play, play a place in my own life? And while you are tracking, you need to reflect. Okay, start asking yourself, what's surprising you about these entries in your time journal? If that's what you're doing, right? What's working with this on this particular project? Um, what's getting in your way? What are some things um, that you need to be doing to get where you want to be, okay? It is incredibly important that we spend the time in this area as well. Understand how you want to move forward now. Because if you don't understand it, how in the world would you expect anyone else to understand it, okay? So take time to track, track and strategize. And with that, there's just a couple more points. Those were my big ones, right? Those are my big push here. If we're trying to remain proactive. We need to keep these things in mind. So this is kind of our starting place. But there are certain features of proactivity. All right, I challenge you with these features. Are you being anticipatory? Meaning, are you thinking about putting that life jacket on before you get on the boat? Okay, are you acting in advance of that future situation? What's the likelihood that this boat will go down? Well, I don't know, ask the people on the Titanic. All right, it happens. So we need to be thinking ahead of it, right? We need to be anticipatory what could happen here. We need to be change oriented, okay? Thing is, if you're the person that would rather just sit and wait, right, wait for something to happen for you, um, well, that's not exactly moving forward and pushing forward with change. Change is inevitable, right? It's part of, part of life. It's a certainty that it's going to happen. And so instead of just letting it happen to you, let's act on it. 
All right, so being change oriented. And the last one here is I believe being self initiated. Are you waiting to be told to do things? Okay, are you waiting for those detailed instructions on how to do it? Are you just taking the leap? And honestly, that's been one of the, the cool things for me about this working from home is I can remember when I first started, I, you know, we were in the office. My office is like, I don't know, three feet away from Ray's office. So if I had a question, instead of me pursuing, all right, self-initiating the pursuit of the answer to that question, it was easy enough for me to walk down the hall, hey, Ray, what, what's your thoughts on dot, 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 or how do we do dot, 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 okay? Now I've been challenged because she's not three feet down the hall from me anymore to really start researching and initiating answers to my questions ahead of time. I don't have to wait to be told the answer, okay? And so I'm grateful for that because I can see where that was certainly a feature I was not representing beforehand. And so anticipatory, change-oriented, self-initiated. So when you're reflecting, think about those, those three features. If you're a manager, okay, if you are a manager, it is going to be important maybe that you help develop some proactivity in some of your employees. We want to embrace this idea. We want to encourage our employees that it's okay, that we want them to be proactive. And you know, a lot of times, I think about this with coaching as well. There's a myth out there that, well, if I coach them to be as good as how I am in this position, then I could lose my position, okay? That they, they may then be better than me. If that's how we're operating as managers, we really need to put ourselves in check a little bit more, all right? We need to recognize that developing people, coaching people, our employees, that should be a priority, all right? And it starts with our culture of trust and empowerment. All right, we have to be able to understand do we have a trusting uh, team or where do we need to start if we don't? Okay, we need to encourage them to bring ideas. All right, to challenge my own ideas, right? I can think of, of, of any employee, and I don't have employees under me currently, but I, I want you to challenge my ideas because then it starts getting me thinking as well, right? And now we're all putting our heads together and now we're moving forward. We're taking risks. We're changing. I remember part of being proactive is, is that change initiate, being change oriented, right? Maybe right now you need to be able to encourage working from home still, flexible work hours. I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be hard if you haven't already transitioned back to the office to get people to come back to the office. Uh, we've learned now that we can work right in this remote environment so uh, maybe they are more proactive your employees are, are demonstrating some more proactivity while working from home so we want to again plant the seeds water the seeds that we want to grow so if we want them to continue being proactive then we need to consider what are our opportunities for encouraging um, that behavior all right implementing the what's our options policy so you come to me you have some concerns or some complaints or something's going on. All right, what's our options with this? I want you to bring some solutions to the table as well. All right, it can't just be, I'm gonna call it the wine mobile. I don't know why, but it can't be that. <laughs> uh, but you need to be able to come to the table with some opportunities, okay? And I think that it's important in that, that when we teach our, our employees that, um, they're more likely to be comfortable with that knowing you know, they'll, they'll, they'll learn it, right? This is the behavior that Brianna expects of me is that she, I come to, to her with some solutions too. They may not always like it, but that's okay. All right, and we always need to reward, again, those proactive, healthy behaviors. So I wanna know from you all, my last question here is we're finishing up. What is one way that you're currently practicing proactivity or you plan to practice proactivity? All of this stuff that we've talked about today, or maybe you're already doing some of it. What are you doing? And if you aren't, then maybe what's something that you're, you're taking away from this? And I'm going to go ahead and, Ray, as those start coming in there, I'm going to run through one other quick thing, and then we're going to come back to this. Okay. So go ahead and finish up in your chats and that in. What's one way and or what's something you plan to do? I just want us to remind ourselves proactivity can be a double-edged sword. Okay, so I don't want to get us off the inspiration train here, but understand 
that sometimes there's a place for everything, right? So our proactivity should not be helpful, or excuse me, should not be annoying or obnoxious. It should always be helpful. Okay, understand, especially for our managers, maybe some of your employees don't have that kind of political tact to understand um, when it's appropriate and when it's not. So maybe you need to help develop some of those interpersonal skills with your employees first. All right, maybe we need them to understand when this is appreciated. All right, because it, it, it may be great to have so much energy and excitement and momentum um, and these people who are trying to, but we need to know then if it's becoming too much maybe for some other team members or if it is maybe, maybe you're becoming too much for your own supervisor. And I, I can think of a situation in a previous position I had where you think you're doing something right, okay, and you're just pushing forward and then you realize, okay, and I feel like I'm, I'm doing too much now. It's become obnoxious. So be careful of the double-edged sword with proactivity. All right, just my, my word of caution there. Moving back to this, Ray, what do we have coming in? Well, we have a lot of people coming in about who's challenging them. And so I think from those challenges then, people move into being more proactive or self-directed. So we've got some people uh, with their, their mentors, um, professional mentors, it looks like, a lot of family members. And so building those relationships um, internally as well. Um, one person mentioned uh, using the Sanvelo app, and that's an app that the university recommended about relaxing and kind of decompressing during these stressful times. Um, Wendy said that she's reevaluating herself and uh, her priorities, and this has certainly been an opportunity in our lives for us to do that. So, I thanks to all of that. Excellent. Thank you. I just, again, I want to encourage you, all right, don't uh, take this information and, and make it overwhelming right now, right? Being proactive, remaining proactive, it's a very simple concept, all right? It's just something that we oftentimes don't have the energy to do, all right, if we're being really honest. And so I think it's important that we just continue to push ourselves, push ourselves past those limits, right? We want to continue to remain proactive, not just for uh, the people around us, but most importantly for ourselves, okay? Most importantly for ourselves. So in summary, I just want you to understand that this proactivity posture is we're gonna take it, okay? It's something, it's a posture you take towards the whole world, okay? It means that you were being, that you're, you're pushing yourself to act, rather than being acted upon, okay? You don't want to be acted upon anymore. It doesn't always feel good. And then ultimately, the best part about proactivity is that no one, okay, no one and nothing can ever take that away from you, okay? They can't take away your freedom to choose. No one and nothing can ever take that. And so I encourage you as you continue to move forward, um, in this pursuit or maybe just in, in remaining proactive. Um, it's an exciting time right now just to kind of see what's going, what's going to happen, all right? What's going to happen with our society? We, we don't know today from tomorrow. Uh, and so right now it's most important to really think about and to start trying to try to do as, as much preparing as you can, right? With that, I just want to thank you all, and I want to just remind you real quickly again of our Flash Friday webinars. Uh, again, those are those one-hour webinars starting on July 10th. Uh, you can register for those at mti.missouri.edu. We also have those Topic Tuesday trainings on there as well. Those start on July 14th, mti.missouri.edu. Um, and I, again, I encourage you all, uh, go out and prosper, right? Continue to push through some of these uncertain times. Uh, Ray, did we have any questions coming in? I am not seeing some. Some very good comments about challenging and raising awareness in your own proactivity. So I appreciate that. Liz had that comment um, here at the end. So uh, I, like Brianna, would like to thank all of you for joining us today. And I sure hope we see you moving forward on some of our Flash Fridays and Topic Tuesdays to come. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Take care. Stay well. Thank you all.